Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Odroid M1 from Hard Kernel. This is their newest single-board computer to hit the market, and they're offering two different variants. Really, the only thing that changes between the two is the RAM amount. We have 4 gigs of RAM or 8. I opted to pick up the 8 gigabyte version, and this is going for $90 over on their website right now. This little board does support an M.2 NVMe SSD, and you can boot directly from it. Right out of the box, I was able to boot from that. We also have the option to add an eMMC module from Hard Kernel, or we can always boot from a micro SD card. Taking a look at the overall layout of the board, it's actually a larger single board computer when you compare it to others, but we have a lot of I.O. to work with. First up, we have the M.2 slot. This does support an NVMe SSD. It's running at PCIe 3 x2 speeds. Along with the M.2, we also have a SATA port here and SATA power. You will have to get the SATA power cable separately, but they also offer a mounting system to mount a 2.5 inch drive over top of the board. We've also got a micro SD card slot, eMMC module slot, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, an IR receiver, and this does have a real-time clock built in, so you can use an RTC battery right here. We've also got access to 40 GPIO pins and a DSI connector, so we can do dual displays out, one over DSI, one over HDMI 2.0. DSi supports 800 by 600, USB 2.0, 4K 60. Moving around to the back side, we have our power input and this supports 12 volts. I'm going to be using a 12 volt 2 amp power supply, that's what they suggest. We've got two USB 3.0 ports, two full size USB 2.0 ports, plus micro USB 2.0. Full size HDMI 2.0, this will do 4K 60 out, and gigabit ethernet. As you can see, this does have a pre-installed heatsink. It's pretty massive, and I haven't had to add a fan to it. You could always add a fan. There is a header for 5 volts out if you want to. But in my test, this works passively cool just fine. No thermal throttling. Moving over to the specs for the CPU, this is using the ROP chip RK3568. It's a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at 1.99 GHz. The GPU is a Mali G52 MP2 at 800 MHz. You can pick this up with either 4 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM. It's using LPDDR4. Storage, we've covered it, but we've got an M.2 slot, SD, eMMC and SATA. And right now, over on their website, they're offering an Android 11 image and Ubuntu, but I'm sure we'll see a lot of stuff coming to this in the near future. It's still really early for the M1. In this first look video, we're going to be testing out their Android 11 build, and I will do another video dedicated to Ubuntu. When it comes to my setup, I'm just going to go ahead and add an RTC battery. I have a bunch of these laying around, and we've got a spot for it. Mine as well. I've got Android 11 installed on that 32GB eMMC module, and I've also installed Ubuntu on that M.2 drive. We'll be doing a full video on Ubuntu, but I kind of wanted to get Android out of the way first. And once it's set up, it looks something like this. Uh, the first thing we're going to be testing here is Android 11. Like I mentioned, it's still really early for the M1, but they do have an image available. And the M1 has Petite Boot built in, so I've got both of my drives installed, and I can select which operating system or which drive I want to boot from here. I'm going to go with that eMMC module, because that's where I have Android installed. I've been messing around with Android for about 24 hours now, and I mean, it's actually really snappy. Everything gets done very quickly, but unfortunately, we don't have Google Play. Now, with the older Odroid boards, we have the Odroid settings, which we could always flash something like Gaps, but with this, I can't flash gaps right now. I'm sure this will be fixed in the future. So a lot of the stuff I wanted to test just isn't going to work because we don't have Google Play services. But we can access third-party app stores, and I've installed Aptoid, got a few games that I wanted to test here, and a couple emulators. But not everything I wanted to test is going to be available because no Google Play services. So there are games here that I just can't test that I usually do with these single board computers. When it comes to these Odroid boards running Android, we usually get Odroid settings, and from here we can adjust the CPU speed and governor. I'm set at 1.99 GHz, I've got the performance governor on, and when it comes to the GPU, I'm obviously at performance at 800 MHz, that's as high as we can go with this rock chip CPU. A couple months ago, I actually tested the same chip in another single board computer, it was more like an Android TV box slash single board computer, and when it comes to 4K video playback with this chip, it does a great job. 4K60. I usually like testing with YouTube, but as you saw, we just can't access it. So I'm going to be running this from an external drive. Yeah. 
So far, so good. It does have that HDMI 2.0, so we can do 4K60 to an external monitor. And like I mentioned, this RK3568 really does a great job with 4K video playback, so we're not going to have any issues there, at least in Android. Now it's time to test out a native Android game, and with a chip like the RK3568, you're not going to be doing any of the high-end stuff. This isn't going to run Genshin Impact, but there's still a lot of games that will be playable on this unit. You want to do some Among Us, some Minecraft, and even Real Racing 3 here? It does work out pretty decently. From what I found from the RK3568, it's around the same performance as the S905X4. Now it's time to check out a little bit of emulation, and when it comes to this chipset, it's not going to be the best for emulation, at least high-end emulation. Older stuff, N64 at a lower resolution, and as you can see here, Dreamcast does work quite well at the native resolution. I'm using Redream here with Fighting Vipers 2. Not bad, I mean, we're getting 60 FPS with it. When it comes to PSP, the harder to emulate games are kind of going to be out of the question unless you don't mind using Frameskip. God of War, you got Midnight Club, Killzone, but there are easier to emulate games that will work on this at the native res. So I'm at 1x here with the Vulcan back in using the standalone version of PPSSPP. It's running pretty decently with this one. I've done some more testing with the M1 and Android and going into this, I kind of knew what kind of performance I could expect out of this chipset here. If you're looking for a more powerful board, I would definitely go with the Odroid N2 over the M1. I wouldn't choose the M1 for gaming, but we do have a lot of storage options built into this board. That way we could build a nice little router or a nice little NAS out of it with that M.2 slot, plus we have SATA here. And the chipset's definitely going to handle that kind of stuff. But when it comes to emulation and gaming, the M1 is definitely not my first option. I would go with something like the N2 if you're looking for a little more power than the Raspberry Pi 4. But for projects that need these extra storage options, the M1 might be for you. Now, like I mentioned, I will have another video coming up. I've got Ubuntu installed on an NVMe SSD, and so far it's been working pretty decently. Their image does have Wayland drivers built in for this Mali GPU, so I think we can get some pretty decent desktop performance out of this machine. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that with a bunch of benchmarks in Ubuntu with the M1, Definitely stay tuned to the channel, and it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post my next one. And if there's anything specific you want to see running in Linux on the M1, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.